everybody. This is Pam at the Paper Outpost, and this is the Paper Outpost podcast. Hey, today I was playing with some embossing, with spritzing with water, spritzing with coffee, playing with napkins on the embossing with water and coffee, and I wanted to show you my results, what worked, what didn't, and we're also going to do a little experimentation together that I haven't tried yet with um, paper towel, <clears throat> paper towel, Toilette paper, also known as toilet paper, and bar napkins. That's right. Okay, so I am working today with envelopes. These are just plain envelopes. I had a bunch, and I was just playing with them. So let me show you. Let me show you what what happened. I'm working with my Big Shot Sizzix ha manual hand crank embossing machine. It also does die cutting, but today we're just playing with embossing. And uh, it makes these beautiful embossed images with something something that is called an embossing folder. So you have to get these things. And you put whatever it is you want to emboss in the center. And then it basically, like a spaghetti machine, it squashes it through here, impress, impressing the, the images onto uh, your paper. So they can come out really beautifully. And these can be so much fun to use in your junk journaling. Um, I was using envelopes, but you can also use regular copy paper, printer paper, um, scrapbook paper, anything you've got um, will go through. And um, some of these are bigger or sm some are wider so you can handle bigger pieces of paper. I just have the regular old traditional one. I got it in Tuesday morning a long time ago. Um, you can buy them used. Uh, I don't know if they'll all work, but there's not really much to it other than it, it cranks and this little like collection of things goes through. Okay, so basically this is what I wanted to know. Number one, I mean, I knew I could emboss. That I knew. So I wanted to see, could I level up? Could I do more fun things with it? And this is what hap This is what I got when I just cut a piece of napkin, one ply. I took, I separated it with tape, got down to the one ply, and uh, I cut out a piece and put it on, and I ran it through, and this is what I got. This embossed, you can't really see it on the video, but it did emboss, this embossed, but they were not adhered together. So I was hoping that maybe the squash would meld them together. Not so. Okay, so that was an epic fail, but still pretty. I still have embossed this and embossed that, so it's not, you know, dead in the water. Um, so then I, sp is this the next one? I never, could never tell. I forget what I did now. Um, okay, so this one I spritzed. I put the envelope down, I spritzed, and I put the uh, napkin on top, and it seems to have adhered better. I feel like I'm, I'm fibbing to that. Maybe that's not the right one. Maybe it is. It's okay. Um, so that seems to have adhered better. It doesn't seem to be popping off. Uh, it seems to like the water that has uh, made it become one. Okay. Uh, now the next one... This one, I, what did I do? No, I want to say this is the one that I spritzed with water underneath. Yeah, yeah, this is the one. Because you know what? It didn't like totally, if there wasn't water at the edge, it didn't grab it completely. It's on there, but I could, I'm sure I could peel this off. Like, let's, let's just see. Maybe this isn't the one. Maybe this is the one I did next. I don't know, actually, at this point. I have a funny feeling this is the one I glued. But either way, that's right. What I did was I took a glue stick and I took a plain envelope, which is where, which is where, I've got them, a million of them right here. Okay, plain envelope. And I just ran a glue stick. I am not using Scotch Create glue stick because I thought it might be a little too moist. I know, I said moist. It might be a little too moist. So I used an El Cheapo one and I just ran it along quickly, lightly. I think like a jot from Dollar Tree would work well here. And then I cut a little square of my uh, napkin and I put it down so that it would sit in the center like that and um, I ran it through and I now now that I'm looking at these I'm really thinking this is the one with the glue yeah this is the one with the glue right this is the one with the glue right let me see if I can I can't even lift it well, oh, I got a tail. No, maybe not. Okay, well, maybe I'm a big fat liar. Oh, no. This is not the one with the glue. This is the one with the water. Okay, that actually did really nice. I mean, if I didn't know to pull that up, I would be really happy. 
Yeah, I would. That would be really like awesome pants. I did have them in the right order. I confused myself. Can you imagine that? But obviously, if you pull on it, it will come off. This is the one with the glue. Okay, we're gonna do these so you can you can actually see. Um, yeah, that's definitely got glue. I just didn't get the glue to the edge. That's why it's coming off. Not much of a difference, honestly, with glue, without glue, the adherence. I mean, this one obviously is, I feel it's like it's gonna tear more. Uh, but that other one, I felt like it was gonna tear if I pulled it off too. So let's carry on, move forward in the advancement of science. What did I do next? So next, I got some instant coffee in water, maybe a tablespoon or two, maybe a tablespoon in this size, and um, just mix it up so there's no crystals really well in a separate um, measuring cup, stirred it around, and then poured it, decanted it into this. And uh, so then I sprayed the envelope first, okay? So just had the plain envelope first, misted it with a little bit of water, with a little bit of coffee, instant coffee dissolved, then I cut out a piece of napkin, laid it on, okay, and ran it through. Why am I explaining all this? Why don't I, am I not just not doing it? Um, yeah, we, we were going to do it. Okay, so, and then, um, so that came out like that, which I thought was nice. You know, did I glue it? I don't think so. I don't remember now. Well, we're going to do all these live, just so you can see. I just want you to know, this was a grand experimentation of a day. But that's pretty, isn't it? I like the way the um, colors come up on there. Um, now, whenever you get these envelopes moist, you might not be able to open and close your envelopes because guess what? There's glue in there, so you might have to create a different opening in your envelope if it all glued shut on you. That can happen. That can happen. Okay. Um, another thing. Uh, -da 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 -da. Oh, now I was getting fun. I just took a, well, I'm just going to show you. That's enough of the explaining. Okay, let's just get to it. Let's take an envelope and let's see how this is all done. All right, so I just grabbed, we're going to use the same embossing folder. This one by Doris. Um, you can find those on Amazon anywhere and probably maybe in a lot of the craft stores still carry them. Don't know, don't know. Um, and just find your um, plates of choice. It all depends on um, what... Um, embossing folder you're using and how thick the thing is in the center, but we're just going to go with simple basics today. Okay, so let's just emboss one by itself, just so we get that envelope inside, closing embossing folder. I have the big fat thing followed by, I never know if it's the right thickness, this one I use all the time, which always bends and bows. I've used it for a hundred years. It always seems to work. That's not tight enough, I can tell. So I'm going to grab one of these backup ones. You always seem to need a few extra of these things. One is thicker, one is thinner. So we're just going to put that maybe underneath and see if that gives us the right thickness. Because we want it to have a nice, tight, snug. And you're going to hear some weird crinkly cracklies. And that is actually a good sign. Yeah, you're going to want to hear that. So here we are through. Okay. So this really isn't a video on how to work this thing. This is really just to see what happens when we use water and glue and coffee. So we've got our beautiful impression in Life is Grand. We could just go home with that. Hey, totally happy. One, one and done, right? Pretty slow. So um, I will show you this. I tried five at a time to see if I could get um, some impressions and, and be a little bit more efficient with the crafting. I got some impressions, but they weren't as um, all the way through, but still pretty. Nonetheless, still pretty. But, um, you know, obviously it, does, it doesn't look like uh, like that, you know, but it's still pretty. Okay, so there, that's five, if you put ram through five at one time. Okay, um, now I tried laying up, uh, I keep wanting to say napkin, Na laying an um, envelope down, spritzing it with water, laying an envelope down, spritzing it with water, laying an envelope down, spritzing it with water, and I did that through five envelopes because I thought maybe that would help the impression. Not so much, no. I mean, I got a little bit more impression, but not like I was hoping for. You know, and I've got sort of warpy envelopes. These have to dry, okay, because they're damp now. And I'm sure they're all gluing together at the back, so there's that. Um, not too super excited about the whole, you know, okay, it was all right, but nothing fantastic to write home about. Okay, so is there anything worth writing home about here? I think so. I think so. Okay, so let's take another envelope. Let's do this. Let's give it a little water mist. Okay, here we go. This is my water mister. I'm coming in from the side here. All right, it's probably too much. It's okay. All right, so now I'm gonna take some napkin. And I don't want my napkin too big. And, and this is probably the fussiest part of all of this, um, is just getting the napkin to sit inside. Otherwise, you're gonna be trimming 
um, trim, 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 trim. It's, you know, okay, that's fun once, but you're not going to want to do that a thousand times, I don't think. Um, I don't know. I don't want to decide for you. You guys decide for yourself. I did do one where I, where is it? Where is it? Oh, I'll find it. It's here. So, oh, here it is. This one um, is a, a longer envelope. And I made it, I made the napkin bigger than it going through. And I had trim, 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 trim. You know what I mean? It's not that easy to trim um, napkin. Okay, so we have this. It's damp. We're putting it in. We're going through. I think this should require the same thickness. And we're going to crank it. Hearing the strange little cracks and things. And that's okay. We're not worrying. That. It should just be like a, a tight roll, but not like so tight you can't get it through because that's not going to work. Okay. Now you're going to see. Okay, have we got adherence? That's kind of pretty, right? I know, right? Yeah. Okay, so did it adhere on the edges? Okay, let's give it the full test. Do, do. Oh, it's not popping off. No, it's popping off. Okay, interesting. Interesting. Let's give it the actual peel. Like, I have a, I have a little bit of a fingernail. That's actually adhered pretty well. I have to admit. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm like getting it up a little bit there, but I'm really having to work at it. I mean... Oh, uh, you know, I would say, okay, how about this corner? Let's see if we can get that corner. <laughs> okay, I can, I can get it up if I really try. And let's see if I can peel it off easily, or is it going to feel like there's glue? And is it going to tear? Okay, it is coming off, and I can probably get it off. Now, let me tell you, if it was decorated and, you know, I didn't do all that fuss fuss, um... I honestly don't think I would need glue at this point because nobody's going to sit there and for an hour. You know what I mean? That was pretty good. Okay. So that was that one. Let's grab another one. Here we go. Just a regular envelope. And I took, where's my El Chipo glue? I don't know, something I've never heard of. Very old. Oh, look how dry it is. Oh, I hope you can see that. That's like, it's been around a while, you know? Um, okay, so let's, uh, okay. Uh, I'm just going to put a little bit of glue down. Not much, just a little bit to get it to stay down. Okay. And uh, remember, if you don't get your item right down glued well, it's going to glue onto your embossing folder, and that's not nice. So that could cause problems. So I'm saying, let, let's do this one together, and you can decide. Okay. All right. Oh, no, I didn't wet it, did I? No, I did not. Okay, so let's put the glue down. Now, if I, oh, okay, I know what happens. I just did it just gluing. That's all I did was just gluing to see how that would go. And I think that's why that other one didn't look so good because there was no water involved. And I think the water really has to come into play here. Here's where it makes a difference. Okay, so we have no water. We have just some El Cheapo. Um, I think it's El Cheapo. I don't remember. El Cheapo glue stick. Okay. Okay, so we, yes, we have some lack of adherence here. Yeah, lack of adherence wants to let go. Not good, not good, not good, but there is glue. Now let's, uh, all right, let's do another experiment. Let's grab the same envelope. Okay. A little bit of glue. I don't know why, but we're just going to put a little bit of glue so we can do our experiment and be complete. Because you're only supposed to change one thing at a time to be a really good experiment. So, okay. So now I have the glue like I did before, and now I'm going to spritz it with a little water coming in from the side. Okay, that's enough. You don't need much, trust me. Don't overdo it. I know you're going to want to overdo it. Don't overdo it. Where's my... Okay, I need a different napkin. I'm using up napkin remnants. Nothing wrong with a good napkin remnant. Um, I think I got these from the Dollar Tree. They were pretty. They had flowers and stuff. You know, sometimes you don't have to go all fancy town. No. Nope. Um, Dollar Tree, Walmart, and Tuesday morning are my napkin sources, primarily for when I purchase them. Okay, here we go. There, we do have glue, we have water. Do we have enough water? I'm not sure. A little more water. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. We feel like we, we have lots of water. Can we do we water? No, not water. Okay, now I just changed the experiment because I sprayed water on top. That's an entirely different uh, experiment. Oh, well. It's still just a little water. All right. Here's my, my thing and my topper. And we're going through. Oh boy. Hang on. Sonny's got the paper towel and the and the toilet paper. Nope, nope, that's not gonna be good. <laughs> okay, here we go. And we're cranking. Let's see how this comes out. 
I think it's going to be okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm just, and I'm doing just a one pass too. So you can go multiple passes, but I'm just doing a one pass. And there we go. All right. And here we are. Well, that's pretty, right? Okay. Let's do the test. Hear a little crinkling. This is glued with water. Is it peeling up? No. No. I don't see it peeling up anywhere yet. I have soaked it well. Now, will it dry and pop off? Who knows? Well, I'll tell you tomorrow. Okay, so am I going to be able to get it at the edges like I did before? Okay, like that was softly using the thumb. Now I'm going to use my fingernail. Oh, I can pick it up when I do the fingernail. Okay, yeah, it does come up. But if you left it, I think it would be okay. So let's put that aside and let it dry. So that one came out very pretty, I think. And I think that's going to stay on there. Okay, that's my gut feeling. All right, so now... We went over into the realm of just playing with coffee spray. So um, I took an envelope and I put it on my embossing folder. And then I came along with my instant coffee spray, which is, I don't really have a good sprayer because it just gives me more of a stream, but I'll do my best. Oh, oh, it's all over the freaking place. That was freaking, it was all over the freaking place. There we go. Okay, now we have that. It's all over my desk all over my machine then I'll show you what I did okay so okay cranking through once nice snugness all is going well I can I can see like coffee oozing out of the um, and uh, thingy folder here um, okay so this is what I have and I think that's very pretty it has like a nice aged look that's very nice right let me turn a little more light on okay and uh, that's pretty not so much on the back. So I thought, well, it's a little bit what I would call uniform. And that might be the look you're going for. But if it's not, and you want a little bit more depth to what you're doing, grab, where is it? Where is it? Okay, nowhere to be found. Um, we'll use this instead then. That, no, here it is. This is it. Um, I just grabbed this piece of plastic, or some kind of plastic sheeting or something. Get something plastic down there, okay? And then what you're going to do this time with your envelope of envelopes, which is here. Oh, I'm getting low on the envelopes. Um, this time we're gonna we're gonna spritz our coffee on the plastic. So here we go. I'm almost making like a faux jelly plate. Okay, so here we go. Dipping. Okay, now I'm gonna dip on both sides because I can do that. See, I'm getting this more uniform. I'm getting like lots of color and stuff. And go around and dab, dab. Dab, dab, dab. Very nice, right? Okay, so now I'm going to go in here. Squash. Okay, run it like we did so nothing has changed yet. Oh, I need the top piece. Nothing has changed yet. Running it through once. And I should get what looked like the other one. But here's where it's different. Okay, I got that one, right? Doesn't look a lo whole lot of different to that one. Okay, but what I did was after I came and I took this and I mopped up. Have you ever seen people like mop up what they're working with, with inks and dyes and things like that? And I found that it magically emphasized certain areas and I was highly intrigued by that. So I almost used this like a paper towel, was coming along and getting it all up. And then I got these much more intense, dark areas. And I thought that was, that was awesome. So I thought to myself, self. Maybe that's the thing to do is spray the coffee over here and just pick up the excess to get some more intense colors. Now I thought all this stuff would come out. It does if you get it super soaked, but still majorly imprinted. Little release there where it got super soaked due to user error, but mildly it's pretty good. Um, I don't know what that weird little thing is. Um, so more intense, very different looking than this. So let me show you. Okay, it is warping up a little bit, so not too watery. Okay, take your take your uh, take it gingerly. Yes. Okay. So last thing we will show you is same technique. I'm going to put a little bit of coffee down. You 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 you. Actually, let me do this. Do I have one more envelope? Here's an envelope. Let's put it down. Let's put a little coffee on it here. Okay be wet. Going in. I'm going to go in for the big squeeze. Okay. 
All right, hope you guys are having lots of crafty fun today. Are your papers calling? I figured I would just show you this little methodical experiment. And this is a grand experiment. Maybe you guys have all done this already. And you're like, oh, Pam, we already done that. We knew that. No, no big deal. To me, it's new. <laughs> so there you go. Okay, so I have that, like I did with the original one. Not much there. Maybe I'm going to mop up a little bit. Okay, so I have a little bit more. Still not that much. So I thought, what if we took our old friend, ink pad, and we just ran it over the top to see if we could intensify what we're looking at. So I put it down, and I uh, can see. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm going to zoom in. Hold on. Hold on. Whoa. There we go. All right. So I have my ink pad and it's going to just really like picking up all those top parts. Yeah, that's kind of neat, isn't it? So that makes it look completely different. I really like that. This to me looks like New Orleans for some reason. And, um, um, the ink is pad is liking the water. Yeah, it's making it blossom and bloom a little bit more. And uh, you can get some really cool things. Okay, let me back up just a smidge so you're not like all in. Okay, that's the back. That's the front. Oh, look at that. That's really cool, isn't it? Now you could, um, okay, let me show you this is what I got. So it has the background coffee color and the front ground ink, which is kind of cool. But then you could even come in with other colors like that, that tumbled glass. The first one was walnut stain. Um, so I think it's best to do on a firm surface. Come on and get it up close and personal. Um, oh, isn't that, that's so pretty. Oh my God, that's just so pretty. I mean, just doing like half of it. Okay, that's too close. There, there. Isn't that pretty? <gasps> That's just so pretty. Okay, a little bit around, just like not all of it, just some of it. Yeah, just like, like halfies. Think halfies. Yeah. Oh, it's so pretty, isn't it? Now this envelope is probably all glued together. Do I care? Heck no. I am just so in love with this creation, and that was so pretty and easy to do. So if you have um, an embossing anything, now I have heard you can use a rolling pin. Okay, maybe with water spritzing, the rolling pin will work better. It never really worked well with me, but I didn't try it with water, but that will be for another day. Oh, let's try, um, we've got a couple more minutes. Let's try, I don't know how we decide how many minutes we have, but, you know, try and make it around 30 minutes or so. Um, oh, it's so pretty, I could just look at that all day. Isn't that pretty? All right, um, that's actually my favorite one. I think that beats the napkins and everything. What happens if you do it with um, toilet paper? All right, stick it in there, Pam. Quit fussing. I want to see what's going on here. All right. Put you back over here. All right. And now there is some coffee in here, so it's going to be a little brown. All right. It's all right. It's all right. All right. Okay. Put that in. Put the lid on. And let's see what we get. Now, I haven't spritzed. I haven't glued. I'm just using good old pressure to bring everything together. And I, I, you've probably tried this already at some point if you have this machine. But, yeah, it does really nice on on this is toilet paper people isn't it i mean okay yeah there's some brown on it we won't talk about that but this is really pretty i mean you could just take this and if i was going to glue this onto a page or tear it up or put it on a card or something like that i would use an um like um, a silicone glue like fabrifix or i would use scotch grade glue stick or a glue stick that because you don't want water on here because that's just gonna you know cause all sorts of problems so wet white glue that kind of stuff unless you really smear it on lightly and then stick it down but isn't that pretty i know who knew that was toilet paper i mean it looks really nice um okay so toilet paper embosses very well okay there we go okay let's try something else let's try our old friend paper towel yeah now this paper towel already has an embossing on it will this embossing stay will we get an over embossing will it completely make the old embossing go away I don't know. Let's try it. I, I'm sure I've done this at some point before, but I can't remember the results. So we'll just fold it in half. Okay. All right. Same thing. We're going through. Let's see what happens. Big experimento here today. We're uh, yeah using our old tools in new ways. I missed half of it. See, now you need the squash factor. So we're going to put that there. Yeah, you want to make sure your embossing folder is entirely covered by the plates. Okay. Oh, this feels kind of loose. We'll see if that's tight enough. Uh, might be. All right, let's see what we got. See what we got. All right, here we go. Ready? Ready? Let me bring it down to you. Whoop, here you are. That's too close. Back it up a bit. Okay. And we're opening. What did we get? <gasps> okay. 
There we go. So I do see a tiny residual bit of the original embossing, but truly it tried to re-imprint the whole thing on this. So that's very pretty, and I just folded it in half. This would be a regular, probably a two-ply or something like that, not fan super fancy. Um, oh, I think I need to wipe up all this coffee. <laughs> it just looks like such a mess everywhere. Okay, but very pretty, right? I mean, we could totally do stuff with that. All right, and then the last thing we will try is Good old bar napkins. Now, my bar napkins were my go-to uh, during the uh, fear of uh, COVID toilet paper uh, vanishing. Uh, everybody was going for toilet paper, and I went for bar napkins because I figured nobody's going to think about bar napkins, and they didn't. There were tons of them available. Um, I'm going to double it up there. I don't know what's going to happen, and I'm just going to fold it over. So there's two bar napkins in there. Let's see what happens. All right, here we go. All right. Oh, that's a nice, crunchy, tight feel. That's good. That's just the way we like it. Okay, okay. Now no, I'm not in the picture. And back up, back up, back up. Okay, there we go. Up oh, there's the belly. Crank that over. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Oh, come on through. Don't be shy. Come on out. All right, I'm coming, I'm coming. Okay. I'm just tighten up. I, I can see imprint. I think, oh, yeah, we got imprint. We got imprint. Look at that. And bar napkins fit perfectly. No trimming needed. Look at that. Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to separate these bar napkins because I, I did them together. Let's see what it looks like. Is it as sharp? Not bad. It's a little less relief shown here, but, but a hair of a difference. You know, still high quality. So you could probably do several bar napkins together and get a nice imprint. This is really pretty. But just remember, if you add water, you're going to lose your definition of your embossing because it's going to... Um, just all fade away because it's only paper, right? It's only paper, everybody. So um, I, I think that's about it. So let me just show you what we made. And this is my good old friend, the Big Shot Sizzix embossing slash die cutting machine. One of these days I'm going to pull out all my dies and we'll just die cut because I haven't die cut in a while. And maybe um, maybe I don't realize there's other ways to have fun than what I was really doing because um, I found it a little bit cumbersome. Uh, this is still my, this takes the cake home. That's it. That's the winner right there. I love that one. The coffee dyed ones are all beautiful. I'll definitely use all of these. There's nothing that's, that's not going to be used. So um, this was all fun to play with napkin. Yep, napkin. Different kinds of napkin. Okay, this napkin's dried already. Let's see. This is the one I was peeling off. And this is just water. This is the just water one. Yeah, see, there's no glue there. That's just water. You get a pretty good adherence, let me tell you. Now, if I didn't, like finger drag that up, that would stay. So water, and then your napkin, and then squash. Envelope, water, napkin, squash. In that order, I think. <laughs> and then here's my other attempts. It didn't go well at all. This was with no water. It just came apart. And here's with coffee. And one of these is with glue, and one of these is without and uh, so those are all the things we made today. So I hope you had fun. And I hope if there's to tools and toys that you have that you sort of forgot about, or um, they, maybe they lack, lack luster, or you know, they're just not so exciting. Maybe there's fun things we can still do with these things. Let's, uh, let's see how we can play with what we got. So I um, have ble many blessings to everybody. Sunny, you wanna say something? Yes, mom, I'm coming. Okay, um, you wanna show me a little pig? Okay, I'll show my little pig. Okay, you show me your little pig. All right, here we go. Sunny has, I may have shown you, have we shown the little pig? I'm not sure, Mama just showed the little pig. Okay, um, hello everybody, this is Sunshine and my little pig. And um, we're just standing, are you okay? Is everybody all right up there? Are you okay? Yeah, we're okay, yeah, everybody's fine. We're just crafting, are you crafting? We're crafting, I'm helping mom. And um, this is my little pig. And all is well. Take care, everyone. Bye. All right. Thank you, Sunny. That was very nice of you. You're such a such a kind boy. All right. Here, here's your little pig. Okay. And um, so, yeah. So, <laughs> hey, if you have not signed up for my uh, free monthly emailed newsletter, make sure you do. Why? Because you get a free digital image emailed to you every month. And I've decided that the word digital is absolutely almost impossible to say with plastic teeth. I have uh, plastic braces in. And... Um, it's very difficult, and I don't know why I ever invented the, I didn't think I invented the word, but I used the word digikit, oh my gosh, and you put the word vintage in front of it, and it's like somebody you, made you eat like a whole pack of crackers and asked you to whistle. That's what it is. Vintage digikit. Okay, so anyway, 
Uh, you get a free digital image that I will send to you um, in the newsletter. You can just print it out and use it any way you like in your artwork and have fun with it. And also I have a, um, a note from the bookmaker, which is free. You can um, change the text, the font, the styles, the word, but it is something that I um, tuck into the beginning of my junk journals. Um, it makes it um, nice for the recipient, explains what a junk journal is and how to use it. I also have a um, checklist of supplies that's so about seven or eight pages long, just to keep your eyes open for as you're traversing the world. Remember, everything is a um, craft supply until proven otherwise. And then also um, there's a page ideas list. So if you're going through your junk journal and you're realizing that every page is a new canvas and you're overwhelmed and you don't know what to do, I've got some ideas for you in this page list and I also have a little mini video series that's going on um, relating to that page list of ideas. And uh, so you can actually see them in action. It, um, and what else? You get a junk journal tip, you get updates from me, you get peeks at my new digikits and a plethora of other smorgasbordy type things. And um, what else? Okay, um, I have a podcast. Hey, you want to learn a little bit about more about me and the life of a crafter, paper crafting, junk journal making, um, and I also answer your uh, crafty questions. I do that on my podcast as well as I've been doing some of those on Fridays here on YouTube too, because um, uh, you guys have the best questions and a lot of people have the same questions. So I love to address everybody at the same time so we can get some of those questions answered and I get to learn a little bit about you, which I love. And uh, I have an Etsy shop where you can occasionally find complete journals, bundles, when they're ready. I also have um, the digi kits, the vintage digi kits, yes. Uh, they are printable downloads, um, instant downloads, digital images, digital printable, I mean whatever you want to call them. Basically they're computer files and uh, you buy those and then they are forever yours um, on Etsy. You're sent a receipt and they're at the very bottom of the receipt and you can click on that or you can go into your Etsy account. They're forever stored for you there. You can print them out, save them on your computer, or if you fr can't find them on your computer, they're always stored for you on Etsy. Um, so you can print them out as many times as you like. There's no limit. And um, what else? Um, oh, I sell fundals. Fundals are uh, cr uh, like collections of old and interesting papers. Um, digi kits, not digi kits, oh, please plan, help yourself here. Uh, <laughs> They're uh, um, old antique ledger, wallpaper, piano paper, um, old stamps. There's very interesting book pages, a whole plethora of things. Um, vintage book pages, there's hand dyed papers, um, a whole collection of 100 plus items that you might find interesting to um, explore. For those of you who are collectors, you will find interesting collectibles in there. Um, I just had a big wave of Bunker Hill come through as well as something else. What, what else was it? It was very interesting. Uh, but yeah, you, you just never know. It's always like, um, you know, roll of the dice, what you're going to get. But I do have categories. Like I have uh, dictionary category and foreign language category and science and nature. And um, so there's these waves of music um, of uh, different areas that I, uh, I make sure that every, every fundal has some of those from every area. And, um, and also remember to feel the papers. Take the time to feel each paper. A lot of these pages are very, very old. Um, there are some in every pack that are from the 1800s um, or early 1900s, and they are um, uh, truly different feeling quality papers. Some may be fragile because they are so old, but you can always mount those on top of a stronger piece of paper, like a cardstock or uh, something like that, so you can still um, use them and... Um, there's some beautiful old advertisements, um, old pictures from magazines, things, uh, things like that. I mean, it's just really, there's a recipe section. There's, there's like a, a lot of different things there. I'm trying to, you know, go through my head and see what the checks, receipts, postcards are in there. A lot of different things. Um, maybe you can find something that tickles your fancy. So if um, you like that idea. Oh, if um, back to the, uh, here we go, vintage digi kits. Yay. Couldn't I not call them instant downloads? Instant downloads. Yeah, and that's so much easier. Um, okay. Um, if you don't have a printer, I have a print and mail option for you. You pay one price. I print them out for you. 10 digi kits. That equals 50 pages total. I print them on lightweight cardstock. You just give me the names of the digi kits you want. You can send me your list of names either through Etsy message or you can email me directly at pam at the paper This whole, this price also includes uh, free priority shipping. So there you go. And what else we got to know? Um, oh, is it too early to think about Christmas? 
I know, I know it's May, but uh, you know, for a crafter, hey, hey. So I'm, I'm thinking about some things. I'm not going to say anything officially yet, but I'm thinking about some things. So stay tuned for that. And also, um, oh, I have a merchandise shop. If you like the phrase create with reckless abandon, um, you can get that for yourself or a friend or family member on a t-shirt, a sweatshirt, a zip hoodie, a tote, a mug. And there will be some other items coming soon, um, maybe with some other phrases as well. So um uh, stay tuned for those. Um, and, 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 uh, that's pretty much it. Um, everybody knows to like, subscribe, and th share things, so I'm going to skip that part. And um, remember, most of all, that fun can be simple. And create with reckless abandon, because you just never know what you're going to discover along the way, right? Happy crafting. Take care. We'll see you next time. We'll explore some more fun things together. Bye-bye.